What's going on guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you a comparison video today between the Adidas Nemesis 17 Plus 360 Agility and the Adidas Nemesis 17.1. The 360 Agility retails for $320 and its claim to fame is the fact that it is a laceless boot while the 17.1 retails for $95 less at $225 and of course it features a lacing system. In today's video I'm going to go over what the key differences are between these two shoes so if you are trying to decide between them the information in this video should help you out tremendously with making the right decision. If you guys enjoy these comparison videos and you want to see more be sure to support the video with a like that would be awesome and without further ado let's talk about what's different between these two boots. The big difference you're going to find between the 17 plus and the 17.1 is what you can very clearly see across the top of the foot. The 17 plus features these agility bandages. It's called their 360 agility bandage system, which is essentially these elasticated straps that you can see they wrap two straps this way and then two straps underneath, but only one of these straps extends until about this point. So that is essentially what's holding your foot in place inside the shoe. It's fully elasticated and it's very, very stretchy. All the straps are held together by these stitches, as you guys can see, and there's pretty much nothing else happening on the inside of the boot. It's just these elasticated straps, a single layer of elasticated straps. So when you put the shoe on, it's actually really easy to get on for a laceless boot, which is kind of unusual, and they feel really comfortable, but this center part is very, very stretchy. So in terms of lockdown and just having your foot feel really secure inside the boot, you don't necessarily get that sensation. There's a lot of movement, especially under quicker, more intense movements, just because this material stretches really, really easily. Think about if you can stretch it this easily with your hands, Think about how much force is applied when you actually have these things on your feet and you're running at full tilt. Let's say if you're 160, 170 pounds, that's a lot of force. This is going to stretch quite a bit. So it's not necessarily going to have the most responsive feel. With the A17.1, you can see the material used here is not quite the same. You have two elasticated straps coming from the lateral side, but it cuts off at this point, which is a little bit different than what you'll find on the laceless variation. Instead of having the straps all the way across the middle, you basically have one piece of material that extends from here all the way here and then goes through this part right here. You can see they put the graphic right there where the straps would normally be, but basically it's just this thin elasticated material. And the reason why they don't have to do the straps is because you have a lacing system instead using a dual lace hole setup. It's a short lacing system, basically just four positions, but it's very effective in terms of locking your foot in place. You put your foot inside the shoe and prior to tying the laces, they almost feel identical on feet. But once you tie the laces tight, you secure both sides of the shoe together. And of course the middle part, everything is stabilized. Your foot's locked in. You have pressure pushing your heel into the back of the shoe and your foot definitely does not slide around nearly as much as what you'll find with the laceless variation. So from a performance standpoint, in terms of responsiveness, uh, this is much better in comparison to the laceless variation. So if that's something that you're after, having the most responsive feel possible, definitely the laced version, the 17.1, is the one to go for. Whereas again, the laceless version, it has its quirks to it. It's wearable as a top-end model, but if you're talking about outright performance, I think the 17.1 is quite simply better. One minor difference between these two shoes that doesn't impact a lot in terms of overall feel is the heel area. You can see when I put them exactly side by side, the back part of the 17.1 is a little bit higher. Same thing for that front piece. The back piece, not gonna be that impactful. I had a little bit of chafing on the 17.1 because it does come up a little bit higher, something I didn't necessarily struggle with as much on the 17 plus. And you also notice this piece right here that has nothing to do with lockdown. It's a little bit shorter on the laceless model versus what you'll find on the 17.1. Again, not exactly sure what the reasoning is, but I figured I'd point it out to you guys anyways. In terms of touch, there is virtually no difference between these two boots. They feature the exact same construction for the upper, aside from the central part that I talked about earlier in the video. You get the Agility Knit 2.0 mesh-based synthetic at the front of the shoe, which is the thinnest material you'll find on the entire upper. It's soft, it's flexible, it offers a good touch on the ball, and then the rest of the upper is made up of the agility bandages backed by a synthetic suede padded liner. So the overall touch on the ball is one that is very, very soft, not overly thin if I'm completely honest. If you're looking for a true barefoot feel, maybe these aren't the best option for you, but they definitely are thin, but you get that padded sensation as well. Overall, I really like the touch, 
But again, if you're thinking that the laceless variation is gonna offer a better touch because of the lack of laces, that's not really the case here. They pretty much feel identical in regards to touch on the ball. As far as traction is concerned, again, no difference here whatsoever. Both boots feature the exact same torsion frame sole plate, which offers really good flexibility. It moves nicely with your foot. And the new stud pattern for the Nemesis lineup works extremely well. It's arguably the most aggressive out of the entire Adidas line at the moment. I'm a big fan of it, and it's also FGAG. So if you play on firm natural grass, as well as artificial playing surfaces, you can get away with using this on both surfaces with only one pair of shoes. In terms of weight, again, there's pretty much nothing that separates these two shoes. I'm gonna weigh them both for you today in real time. Keep in mind, they're both a size nine US. We'll start off with the 17 plus, the laceless model. You can see that they weigh in at 7.4 ounces, the equivalent of 210 grams. Change it back there to ounces, pull these off. We'll throw on the 17.1, and you can see that they weigh in at 7.5 ounces, 213 grams. So you're looking at a three gram difference between these two shoes, which I can 100% assure you, you are not going to feel either in hand or on feet. So weight should not be a deciding factor here. In regards to fit, there again is not a huge difference between these two shoes in terms of the overall shape. It's pretty much the same upper, which lends itself to having a very similar feel. The difference is going to be the fastening system where the laceless boot feels more loose and less secure than what you're gonna find with the 17.1, just because you don't have the adjustability aspect with not only this boot, but any laceless boot. Obviously you put them on and you're at the mercy of these elasticated bands running through the middle of the shoe. They can only have so much tension and the amount of tension that they provide is not overly significant. So what you'll find is as you start moving around, there's gonna be stretch there when significant force is applied and that's going to allow for more of a sloppiness to the shoe than what you're gonna find with the 17.1 when it comes to the fit. So if you're talking about outright responsiveness and just general lockdown, the 17.1 is much better because you put them on, it's still a one piece enclosure, but you can connect the two sides of the shoe and stabilize the central portion, which means that it's not gonna move around on you and the end result is gonna be a much more stable, much more lockdown feel and a much more responsive overall performing shoe as well. So that's the main difference. I really don't think that one is more comfortable than the other because you're more locked down than the 17.1, your foot's gonna slide around a little bit less, which I would argue is more comfortable, but I'm not gonna argue that the 17 plus isn't a comfortable fitting shoe. It feels fine, but if you really like a tighter, more responsive locked in sensation, I think the 17.1 is the better option for you. And as far as overall width and sizing is concerned, they're gonna fit most people. They both have a decent amount of width to them. If you have super wide feet, maybe not the best option, but for most people, you shouldn't have too many issues. And both shoes run true to size as well. I'm wearing my usual size nine US here, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you're looking to order either of these two shoes, I would personally recommend going true to size. All right guys, so that is it for my comparison between the 17 plus and the 17.1 variations of the Nemesis. If it wasn't entirely clear throughout the video, my preference is the 17.1. That's not to say that the 17 plus is a bad shoe, but for me, I prefer the more locked in, tighter fit that you can get from the 17.1 because of the lacing system. And really, that is the main difference between these two shoes. No laces or laces. I think the lacing system works better in terms of the overall functionality of the boot, but it depends on what you want. Anyways, if you're interested in either of these two shoes, there'll be links to the review pages on my website down below in the description of this video. And on those pages, you will find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick them up below their normal retail prices. So if you're interested in either of them, links down below, go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions regarding these shoes, leave them down below in the comments, and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you guys enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. That would be fantastic. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.